I mean, I would like to see my face. What's going on? <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Kist, and welcome back to a new update. We're finally back in Mirrors Online, and perfect timing. Quite literally, as I am recording this, an update just dropped not even 20 minutes ago, and we're here to check it out. So without further ado, let me go ahead and turn around and boop. Ta-da! It's time. We finally have new things to talk about, so without further ado, let's just take a dive into the update. There are a lot of cool features to talk about during this update, and we're going to talk about them all. But since we have them in front of us, let us talk about the new rolling stock added. On our right is the Oahu water tank car. And yes, you heard me correctly, water tank. This thing is now designed only to hold water. If I move the hatch, there we go. You see, we actually can see inside there, it is hollow. But if I go to our facilities, and all right, I got it placed down. I don't know why it took me that long, but it took me a decent amount just to get the spacing right. But what is the point? What is going on here? Well, the point of this update is to showcase more of the agricultural side of the industries. So we have the water well, a wheat farm, cattle farm, and meat packing plant. The water well helps deliver fresh water to these industries. Since we have cattle now, we actually do have cows, um, we need to be able to put fresh water for them. Our current list of water towers are not fresh water. They do not carry drinkable water. That's why we need this water well. So once you actually place it down, you might have to place it a little bit closer than you're expecting. You go up here and move it out. It has to be in line. Let's go ahead, jump down here, and we gotta turn the valve. Let's go take a look at it. Be beautiful. The only thing that sucks is we have to wait for each water droplet. So it's not terribly slow, but you will have to wait a little bit. And I think you can trick it if you do this. I believe so. That'll be at the test more later, but you for sure can load, it does work, and if you want to carry your more water to these new industries, this is what you have to do. This valve doesn't work, it's only decorative, I'm going to say, but it's supposed to connect between all the water cars just to make it a little bit more feasible. On the other side of the box car, we actually have another water tank car, but it's the Oahu. Let's go see how much it can carry. So now we have water loading, let's go see, six. So, very little tiny, very, very cute, but now we have six water only in this tank car. So let's go ahead and turn this off, we don't need it anymore. Behind us, we have a new type of box car. Let's go ahead and open her up. Beautiful. Very simple. This car is going to be used to carry your products from the meat packing plant. I believe if I go press G and we go look at it, it is a little laggy here in the buy menu. I don't know why. Let's go to our new box car, however. See here, freight type meat. It can only carry meat. The box car can now carry the seed pellets, as we know from last update, and grain. The livestock car finally says cattle, so that's very nice. And yeah, we got some very interesting new features so far. Now let's talk about this guy. We have a new engine into the game. It is the Fairies in Cliff House 242. Now I just loaded it with some fuel, but it seems like it ate a lot of it. Watch this. Oh. You see that? It just went down immediately. I don't think I can deposit it. No, I think I just threw coal away. But let's take an actual look at the cab. I have one of the older paints on it, so it's definitely a lot more textured. Um, it's pretty cool. 
so I just made a new video about it yesterday, but let us go ahead and jump into the UI. Ta-da! Yep, don't really have too much to say about it. Except, one of my opinions is that this is too big over here, and I still stand by it. I think it should just be downsized ever so slightly, or make it a little bit more manageable. But, without further ado, let's go ahead and get a whistle test of the new engine. Well, that was very, very interesting. I actually really like that whistle. It is rather loud, but that's really cool in my opinion. Um, there is a slight disclaimer. If you press Opt or Escape and go to Options, my audio settings were completely reverted. Everything was back to 100. So I admit, I tried the whistle and absolutely blew my ears off. Just keep that in mind, um, the audio setting probably reset, you know, to change things down. Even with the settings dialed down a little bit, it is very loud. Oh my gosh. But, um, just keep that in mind. I'm also going to turn it down just a little bit more because I'm not really fully happy with it. That's a little bit better, a little bit more manageable. So, um, I think the next step as we kind of transition to other things is let us go ahead and open the throttles and test her out. It looks like 20. I think that's a monster. Whoa! What is this? Now we're going 25? What's if I mean it's more neutral? 26? The sounds are a little weird, I will admit. You can hear the loop repeating. But, let's go ahead and break. Wow, that stopped on a dime. Look right here in the center of the speedometer, you'll find the speed, which is zero. And I think it affects by the Johnson bar. So let's go ahead and put this closer to zero. And let me start the engine. We're barely moving. But if I bring this all forward... Whoa! Now we're picking up speed. We're staying at 20, and this is reverse right at 100. So now let me bring it back to, let's say, 50. Look at that! We're going up! Let's bring this back to center as much as possible. Let's see what happens. Do we get faster? We do! That is very exciting. Oh, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't care about this. We don't care about this. We want to go over to our new engines. Our old engines, I should say. I need to find one that I can just quickly grab. Okay, and here we are, finally just leaving the yard slowly but surely. We're currently at 19 to 18, 19 miles per hour. I'm sure as we go through the points, we'll slow down a little bit as well. But as soon as we're on the main line, I am sending it. We're going to mess with the Johnson bar just a little bit. I don't know why I said it like that. We're going to mess with the Johnson bar just a little bit and see if we can pick up some more speed. And here we go. Let's open up throttle and pull back on the Johnson bar, we should see our speed increase. Whoa, would you look at that? So we're at 22, 
Can I go any faster? Nope, I think. Oh! 23. 24. We're staying at 24. Very nice. So, will we break? Very, 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 very nice. That is a nice change, for sure. Gives us some level of realism. We can also do that in first person, I'm guessing, because it just directly, I can get in here. I think it does, if I, let's let off the brake. Let's try a little bit in first person as well. So we're all the way in the corner. Let's go. We'll double check our speed here. So we're currently at, 20. Okay. So now let's pull back on the Johnson bar. Let's see if we go any faster. So it's showing 23% reverse or full throttle. Because we are going faster. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. If you haven't seen the video I released on Sunday, December 10th, I did talk about the new industry chain, and what do I mean? Well, the point of the farming industries, the agricultural industries, is not to add on to the oil ones. They're, they, they're not an addition to the oil ones. It is a new industry chain for you to enjoy. We start with the water well. Again, since we talked about it briefly, we need this to bring fresh water over to our new farms. Your first destination is the wheat farm, and you need to take seed pallets from the freight depot here to the wheat farm and drop them off. If we go over here, you'll see that we also need to drop water off here in the tub. I'm gonna call it that little jacuzzi. I think inside, nothing changed too much. I think now we have the grain but nothing changed on the inside. We go over here and we see where we get to load everything. Here, you get to load your grain. I believe on the other side is where you get to load your hay. We now have the cattle ranch. And if we look right here, it's a cow! Look at that. If I hit, I think I can trial run it. Can we not? Or does it need the car in front of it? I'm just so happy. Look at the cow. Look at the cow. Okay, 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 we gotta talk about this. Someone correct me in the comments. Why is there horns and an udder? Bulls have horns, cows have udders. You what? What is going on here? All right, not, we're not gonna worry about it. We're in a time constraint, time budget, whatever. Hey, I heard that. Our last new industry is the meat packing plant, or slaughterhouse, if we want to be that way. Here is where we drop off the cattle, right here, to be processed into different um, food products. To help fuel the industry, you need coal. So we finally have a new place to drop coal that isn't simply the ironworks or a coaling tower. On this beautiful platform over here is where you, uh, sorry. On this beautiful platform over here is where you pick up the meat products, right here. It's not these individual cans, but it's the whole crate of product that we need to move. There's only one, so it sucks, but they did mitigate it because now all cranes load three at a time. They load three products per go. So that should be helpful for sure when it comes to loading them. And already, everybody, I believe we covered all the in-game content that they added. However, there are some little things we need to talk about. They did change some stuff here in the options menu. If I go to gameplay, we'll notice a new bar, fuel consumption. You can change how the engine actually interacts, so this will control some of the operations. I didn't know this, but now I know that the Johnson bar actually affects how we run trains. And I believe this can also affect it as well. It makes sense to me why that would be the case. 
Everything else is the same as we know from the earlier updates, but now we have a new thing for fuel consumption. That's not all. If we go to graphics, we have a few new things to talk about. For me, motion blur was set back to 50%. It was set back to default. So I turned it down to one for clarity's sake. And now the brand new thing, an FOV slider. Let's go ahead and take, oh, oh. I see, okay. So gameplay, that's wrong one, graphics. Let's go all the way. Whoa, oh my gosh. Dude, oh my, okay. We're gonna get off of that as soon as possible. The other thing that they added was this. You can pick your direct X version. Oh no. To believe to help depending on your graphics card. I know not all up-to-date graphics cards can run this, so you should be able to change it if you have a semi-up-to-date version, I hope. I believe that is it. Um, they did have an update to the controls UI, but that was a while ago. Uh, this isn't really new. You can change some other small things here, but not necessarily enough to break the game or um, challenge the game. Again, audio, just be careful, everything was reset to me. Um, not the controls, the controls weren't reset for me. Um, but the graphic settings was reset for me. So just be careful of that in the settings uh, upon loading the game. It will save once you fix it, but um, another disclaimer. The only thing that really causes me to be on edge is the new driving UI. It's very obvious that you can see the box. I guess this is for when it's night. Let's go ahead and go to night. Yeah, you can clearly see it. But, I mean, I think it's clearly visible without it. I mean, this is very visible because it contrasts so well, but this is so up in the air. I just don't like how it goes up into halfway into my screen. That's just very distracting. I can get rid of it, sure, but what if I want to control my engine? I could use some of the keybinds, but nah. I will say though, I, I am overall happy. This is my truly my only one critique so far. There was a new bug when buying the cars that I had, where they just all stacked on top of each other, and I'll show a picture of that. So just be careful of that when you're buying engines, um, or buying your new cars, you might run into a glitch. I believe that's it, so let's go ahead and take one final look at the patch notes and we will be done. So here we are in the patch notes, and as you can see, a decent amount of content was added. If I keep scrolling down, we'll find the bug fixes. And if it looks a little laggy, don't worry. It's just Steam right now. We already talked about basically all this, except for just some little detail things. So I can see here, we're now in Unreal Engine 5.3. Brakes now work as intended. Yay. Um, the new industries, water well, cattle farm, yada, yada, yada. Um, the Ferries and Cliff House 242, top speed is 30 miles per hour. As you saw in the video, we only got to, I think, 26, something around there. Had a water tank car, a Vintage box car, a water, um, a water sugar car, or a company water tank. Added two new paints to the Class 48, one new paint to the Ruby Basin, one new paint to the Cook 26 Coal. Um, that is just some of the older style paints, like the... Um, Oh, what is it? The 10 mile, the Mason Bogey got last update or during the anniversary update. Changed the stock car to now hold cattle, will still hold tools. Add a new props. Look for SM. Oh, I want to go back and look at that. Updated speeds. The class 70 can now go 23 miles per hour, and both Cook 260s goes 25. Very, very nice. Updated reverser. Added cutoff simulation. So it is true. That is very, very cool. Bug fixes, break bug, some translation, FPS loss. Very, very cool. Let's see, let's see what this says. No, he got tiny. He's now shorter. No. Reduced player character size. The crouch is now not as low as before. Just the firebox hitboxes, fixed collisions with wood trestle bridge, added a new third person driving UI. Not the final design. 
the design will get an extra update. Okay. Again, add a direct X11 and 12. Cranes on the cow ramp add load three with each loading cycle. Added a gameplay setting for water and coal consumption, aka rebalance. Low one usage, medium two, four usages. Okay. Very, very interesting. It also gave this a new update for the industry chains that they added. And if you guys want, I will link the patch notes down in the description below so you can check out some of these trailers. And yeah, let's go back into Rose Online and end with those props. Whoa. They added a lot of props. What? There's so much. Oh my gosh. I don't think I could showcase all of this in a reasonable amount of time. Headpan. Ah, ooh, look at that. Oh, this is going to be very cool. But unfortunately, I think we'll have to end it there. However, we can't end an update video without ending it in true kissed fashion. <laughs> That's right. I'm back. And oh, do I got something for all of you. Coming straight off the line is this mean, lean, petite looking machine. With more curves than your failing math grade, she comes packed with a load of features including wheels, tiny wheel, big antlers, wood in the shape of a triangle, this thing, another triangle, Mickey Mouse, fire rock, piston, and back at enough speed that makes Amazon look like UPS. That's right, she's the total package and more for a nice measly price of 99999 cents. If you call within the next five minutes, then you can get a discount price of $3,910, and you won't regret it. Do it now! Alrighty, everybody. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it, and I hope you got a good laugh just then. This update is very, very exciting, and I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say about it. Um, I can really see that Rails Online is going to a better direction. I know it should help some of the realism folks because now we have a little bit better simulation. Maybe the UI or how we do it is a little silly, but we're getting a little bit more of the realism aspect as well. This makes me really excited to see what they're going to do in February during the next big update. There will still be one in January, I believe, but um, we should see the next big update in February according to the dev team. If you're new and you're catching one of my videos for the first time, maybe consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the notification bell, as it's free and it goes a long way in the end. Alrighty everybody, my name is Kist, and thank you for watching.